One of the benefits of the visible wellbeing approach is that the teachers have started changing their language and the way they speak to us. So they're asking us how we are and if we're okay um, and just dif different things like that, making sure that we're in a good state to be able to go into a classroom and start learning. I love visible wellbeing at Good Shepherd mainly because it's just something that brings us nice and calm and in Miss Cummins' class for our science, she lets us colour in at the back of our books and that just settles us down for our lesson. We usually listen to a song at the end of the day and that just makes us feel relaxed and happy really. In Year 7 INS has been doing visible well-being. We're just doing a wonder walk and taking photos of things around the school. One thing I'm really appreciative of that we learned through Visible Wellbeing is how to apply and I guess because the Visible Wellbeing was kind of for teachers to learn how to apply this for students benefit. Um, it helped me learn how to apply it almost as a teacher in um, things like homeroom from a leadership position. I'm um, having to work with other kids my age and slightly younger and, and lead them. It was very helpful um, in trying to get them to do things and also just creating a better environment in the classrooms. As staff and students, we are beginning to use see, hear and feel in our classrooms and our playgrounds to develop a common language. So Ellie mentioned see, hear, feel and that's, that's the concept that I feel is really important that we learnt from the visual wellbeing. And the general idea with that is that we're able to take things that naturally, as soon as we associate with like traits or something, you see goosebumps, you get the idea that someone's amazed or they're nervous, there's, there's some kind of feeling attached. You see sweat, you know that they're um, energetic or that they're outputting, things like that. But then the visual well-being allowed us to take those visual signs, things that we see, hear and feel, and then go, what do they mean? And allow us to work back on that. I know personally, I'm um, doing things like um, homerooms and stuff, I've been able to implement that. If I see people slouching or getting a bit um, yawning and stuff like that, getting a bit tired, I'm able to go, all right, now I need to use an emotional primer game that brings people up. So I'll play one of those games that we got taught at the visual being things to emotionally prime people and vice versa. If people are a bit too rowdy for me to control and we need to do something a bit more quiet, then I can play one of those um, calming games that we learn. That's a really good technique that we've learned. Being, we do drumming, singing and dancing and it helps all of us to relax and get mindful. And as part of mindfulness we relax and we think about the present. As part of visible well-being we do some drumming and singing and it's really fun and it just allows us to let loose and just get all the things that are stressing us off our minds. You're made of atoms and we're all in this together. recess we go and do meditation. We do breathing and stretching which helps us to calm down and do work properly. We all feel great! Miss um, Park lets us play with the putty so it's like sort of makes the stress of the day go away. It's quite relaxing. One of the things I love about well-being is doing fitness. I really enjoy visible well-being at Good Shepherd, such as drawing or listening to music. Our teachers let us do little brain breaks to help us focus more on our work. We do brain, ba brain breaks when we see people drifting off, um, we feel tired, we hear moaning, we see uh, stressed, angry, sad expressions, we feel bored, um, stressed out and our heart starts to, we get hot or our heart starts to increase. Brain breaks help us re refresh our mind so we um, are ready to keep going if, um, if we've been working for a long time and just need a little break. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing bucket fillings. Bucket filling is when you fill other people's buckets by writing positive compliments to each other. We do bucket filling because it helps other people's self-esteem and so it encourages people so they can have an overflowing bucket. My bucket filler says, you will make a great school captain. 
That makes me feel proud and excited. My bucket filler says you were funny and friendly to everyone. Thank you. Dear Toby, I appreciate that you are funny and forgiving. That makes me feel confident. My bucket filler says, Hi Emma, you are a good drawer and have nice hair. That makes me feel very happy. And this particular activity, we focused on character strengths. Now, um, I didn't actually want to just laminate the character strengths and put them up. I wanted the students to be involved. And so what they did, the, the year fives with their buddies, got with their um, transition buddy and they drew how they thought the character strength would look like. My top strength is creativity because I always show creativity in all my work and I always use creativity in all my colouring and drawings and I always like to be very creative. My main character strength is leadership because I like being um, fair and I also like being a good leader. has changed the way that I um, teach in my classrooms. It has allowed me to use more strategies um, and a, a platform to uh, make students a little bit more aware of their own well-being. It allows students to refocus back onto the activity that we're doing and essentially we're actually doing more work, which is great. teachers are trying to expand the school and are trying to teach in a way that we will learn and, and it has really helped us in the classroom. You see in classrooms teachers are implementing things such as a gratitude wall. One of our teachers has made a tree and we write what we're grateful for on the leaves and when you're having a bad day you can look up and see what, you, what people are grateful for and it does really lift the classroom spirit. Mm -hmm. 